hi welcome to the part 5 of this video series in this video series we are looking at az304 important exam questions please subscribe to my channel and like my videos let's look at the questions for previous questions refer parts 1 to 4 of this video series you may pause this video to read this question carefully so first understand the story and identify the keywords so if you have read this question so the question goes this way you have app services various app services and then you have databases which are on azure sql db and the need is that this has to be deployed on specific locations for example say us east and singapore so it has to be deployed in very specific locations now the need is that the app services instances and all the resources related to, to those instances for example the database should reside in the same region so they are giving a solution they are saying to use resource locks here see resource locks has a very different purpose suppose you have a sql database and you want to put a lock so that there should not be any changes to the configuration of the sql database that is one example where resource locks can be used basically you don't want to allow any changes to the resources that's why resource locks are used it is not used to restrict it to certain regions so this answer should be no so this is the answer we will move forward to the next question so now we have the same question but this time the solution is different it is saying you recommend using an azure policy to enforce resource group allocation so it is saying to use azure policy which is fine if you see azure policy it is used to enforce organizational standards for you know any compliance related stuff so if you see your regulatory compliance you can do that you can have uh, a policy which says just deploy on these two regions that's all so the answer here is yes let's move forward to the next question try to understand this story and identify the keywords so the story here is you have on-prem and you have hpc clusters and this cluster runs a parallel compute intensive workload so and you want to move it to azure batch so you want to give a solution to meet these two requirements first is cost second is large scale parallel execution so out of these types of vms which one will you prefer so let's look at birth stable virtual machines first okay what is important here is workloads that do not need full performance of the cpu continuously but that is not our use case if you see here these are you know compute intensive parallel if you're seeing parallel that means uh, it is damn continuous it has to be continuous so option a is ruled out it is wrong let's look at option b low priority virtual machines since our question has cost associated so if you see this uh, this one offers a low priority virtual machine to reduce the cost of batch workloads very ideal for batch workloads and it will reduce the cost mm -hmm. so we need to minimize the cost and we need parallel execution so it serves both the purpose so if you see this it says uh, it enables large amount of compute power at a very low cost so b looks to be a potential answer let's look at option c so mpi support virtual machine so option c is uh, not a cost effective solution it would serve the purpose to some extent but it will be very expensive compared to option b so we should rule out option c now option d basic a series virtual machines so this is good only for entry level 
or development and test environment workloads it is not good for such high intensive or compute intensive workloads so d is totally a misfit so we will lock this answer and move forward so this is the question you may pause this to read it at leisure basically you have azure batch you have two types of loads one is short running which is for your dev environment the second is long running which is for your prod environment okay and now you need to choose the pool type and node type for the first job and the second job the first job is short running the second job is production load long running and production load so let's scan the options for the first job the first option says batch service and dedicated virtual machines so this is very much ideal for production so let's park this for now the second one is user subscription and dedicated virtual machines this looks correct this is something which we should use because the third option says user subscription and low priority virtual machines so user subscription is not supported in low priority virtual machines if you see this documentation it says low priority vms are not supported for batch accounts created in user subscription mode hence my answer would be this one second option because first option is very expensive uh, for a development environment so the second option would be cheaper than the first option because of the cost i am choosing that okay because it says the question says you have to minimize the compute charges okay and leverage as your hybrid benefit so if you have dedicated virtual machines you can leverage hybrid benefit which means what is hybrid benefit it means that you have suppose a set of sql server licenses on prem so you can you know migrate those licenses use them on azure cloud as well so that is possible with option 2 uh, option 2 now the second job second job uh, the idle see the same options are there so the third option we just saw that it is not possible because it is not supported user subscription is not supported on low priority vms so what we need to do here is uh, we have to choose between these two options now this option is definitely cheap cheaper than the first option but you see you have this requirement of mpi for mpi always remember that you should use a batch service for mpi and since you have a production environment where the need to complete these jobs timely is of utmost importance so we should go for a dedicated virtual machine see for mpis you will need a, a solid bulk of compute power for parallel processing that is what you will need so these two are our final answers let's look at the next question so try to understand the keywords here and the story behind this question in my opinion the keywords are this the apis needs to be available to external users whenever you do that you need a reverse proxy to protect your infrastructure and applications ingress controller has that so if you see this it does reverse proxy and it also has tls termination for kubernetes service now another requirement if you see here you need to provide access to apis by using a single ip address if you see this line using an ingress controller a single ip address can be used to route traffic to multiple services it meets our requirements 
so this is the right answer now nsg you know we if you want to block certain ips or etc or we pr provide uh, inbound and outbound ips that is the purpose here it that will not help you let's look at this question so whenever you see image rendering or parallel compute the obvious answer should be azure batch virtual machine skill set uh, will not help you with parallel compute processes no matter how many skill sets you develop how many virtual machines you have in those skill sets it will never be able to match the compute power that is needed for parallel compute processes function app is used for very small level kind of transformation or functions it cannot handle parallel compute processes aks is used to host and publish microservices kind of arc, uh, applications so azure batch is the final answer so this question i've already marked the answer here the solution wants uh, you have two containers and one container is used to host a web api the other container uh, will perform health monitoring of these ap api applications container instances are the best suited for this purpose so if you see container registry documentation this registry allows you to build store and manage container images and artifacts in a private registry it is not used for the purpose of uh, you know having two instances so azure service fabric is a distributed systems platform that is makes it easy to package deploy and manage scalable applicant microservices and containers application so this is primarily useful for stateful services so here uh, we we do not care we do not want a stateful service we need a stateless kind of stateless service because there is no need to store the state of the application so that is not required that is one this other is minimize cost if you compare the from a cost perspective cost perspective containers instances are more cost effective and the maintenance overhead is less in container instances let's move to the next question you have an azure subscription and your virtual machines are running on windows server as well as linux and you need to uh, use azure monitor to design an alerting strategy so the question is asking which azure monitor log should be uh, table should you query query so if you see in the linux world in the linux world we would use syslog data sources for this, this purpose so the answer for the linux system logging should be syslog and for the windows event logs we use events so please note that we are looking for security related events and if you see azure activity it logs subscription level events so that is not what the question needs that's why azure activity is wrong if you see azure diagnostics diagnostics this is an extension what it does is it collects the monitoring data from guest operating systems of azure compute resources including the virtual machines so it is not collecting security related events so that's why azure diagnostics is also wrong so these are our two answers we will lock this and move forward now let's look at this question so here if you see the keywords here uh, what is happening is you have a chief technology officers which is sending the message our developers have deployed the web service to a virtual machine testing shows that you know the api is accessible from vm1 and vm2 as well now if you see the next slide this is the configuration of virtual network here and uh, what it is doing here is uh, the apm service apm service you deploy it and this is the configuration so i've already marked the answers here if you look at but let's look at the questions the api service is available to partners over the internet okay you see here our partners must be able to connect to the api over the internet and is it possible so if you see this the virtual network is external yeah that is possible because the partners are not internal they are external and they are over the internet and that is possible so we select yes the apm instance can access real time data from vm1 the question itself says the web service allows the api to access real time data from vm1 so this is yes this is yes and the vpn gateway is required for partner access no it's not no because the virtual network is external in nature that's why you do not require a vpn uh, gateway for the partner access so these are our three answers and we will move forward with the next question i would like you to 
put your thoughts on this question we will have the answer in my next video so this brings us towards the end of this video please subscribe my channel and like my videos see you in the next part of this video series